G'day everyone and welcome to the Fidget Spinner tutorial for Autodesk Fusion 360. So in this session we're basically going to look at how to uh, basically create the geometry, the 3D model uh, that's required to 3D print your fidget spinner. Alright, so without further ado, let's get stuck into this. So the first thing I'm going to do in uh, Fusion 360 is just click on the uh, the save icon there, which will just uh, instigate or kick off the auto save feature. So I'll call this uh, spinner. I'm just going to call it spinner one, and then I'm just going to choose a location. I'll put that in a new project. I think spinner one. I'll just put it in spinners, and um, I'll just hit enter there. So just creating a new project folder. That way, if I ever create any any more there, yeah, I can work with those. All right, save. All right, so what I'd like to do now is just start sketching. So I'm going to click sketch here, and I'm going to choose this plane here. Now, this plane here represents the top plane, okay, or the ground plane. So I'm going to pick this one here. All right, let's move my sketch palette over, out of the way here. And I might just reposition by panning. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create uh, a circle, which is going to be the spot where the bearing goes. So I'm going to go into my sketch tools, circle, and you can see the center diameter circle there and the shortcut being C. That's the one that I'd like to use. And I'm going to draw this at the origin, right where the origin is just there. And I'm, there you go, I'm pulling it out. And then I'm just going to hit D and throw a dimension on there, and then I'll make that 22. Now, 22 basically represents or is the number uh, that is the diameter of the bearing that we are using. Now, those bearings might uh, be slightly bigger, but we can, all, we can update that a little bit later on, given the fact that this is parametric modeling. All right, so we've done that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to actually offset this piece of geometry here. So if I go back into my sketch tools, we've got offset. Uh, the shortcut there is O. So we can go there. Now you can go sketch curves. Okay, so I've got to select this one here and then give it a value. So I think I'll offset this by six. Okay, that's done. Enter. Now the counterweight that we're going to use uh, are some nuts that we've just got hanging around in the workshop. So it's a little bit cheaper than using bearings. All, all, all that's going to do is just add a little bit of weight and make it spin a little bit longer. So let's let's draw a polygon. And I'm going to go with this option here, circum circumscribed polygon. And I'm actually just going to pull this out and just kind of pull across this way. Now I'm going to do a few things on purpose here. So I'm going to pull across there like so. Now you can see... What I'd like is for this uh, this edge here to be horizontal. So what I'm going to do here is go into my sketch palette, just so grab the horizontal vertical constraint and click on, boom. You can see that's pulled that back. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to pull this where the center is to match with the center here so it's in line. So I'm actually going to use my horizontal or vertical constraint here. So I'm actually going to click there and click there and that's pulled over there. So you can see I've got a horizontal vertical constraint. All right, so I don't need that anymore, so I'm going to press escape. In fact, what we should do here is throw a dimension on this. So let's just hit the D key, and I'll, what's the dimension between here and here? Let's have a little look. Okay, 28. I think I need that to be about 13, so we'll put 13 in there for the time being. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another circle. Let's go circle. Again, shortcut if you haven't picked it up already, C. And we're going to use the center point there and we'll just pull that out. And let's say we go to there. In fact, let's throw a dimension on that. What was that? I'm going to go with, what does 30 look like? Yeah, we'll go with 30. All right. Done. Now the next thing that we want to do is determine the distance between these two centers here. So I'm just going to throw another dimension and I'm going to pick the center there and the center there. Okay, and we can see it's 34 point something there. I'm going to make that 30, I think. Okay, so let's make it 35. We'll go with that. 
All right, so we've got that. Now the next thing I'd like to do is basically do a pattern, uh, a circular pattern or an array if you like. So I've got basically one of these up here, another one down here, and another one over here. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Let's go to sketch, circular pattern. Okay, so select the objects. So I'm, I'm gonna select these guys here. Okay, so we've got those. And then the center points that we're gonna rotate these around, let's click a center point there. And I've got quantity as being three, so that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna click on okay there. Wonderful. So the thing here is that if I ever update this di this uh, distance here for the nuts, if the nut size changes or if it becomes, let's say, 13.1 or something like that, you'll see the other nuts update as well. Okay. Now, let's go and actually create uh, a tangent in here, a circular tangent. All right. So what I'm going to do here is, again, go to circle and I'm just going to Pull out a circle over here. Doesn't really matter where it is. I'm just going to pop it there, and then I'm going to go and grab um, in my sketch palette, so you can see this tangent constraint. So I'm going to click here, and select there and there, and then a tang tangential constraint will be formed, which you can see there. And I'm going to do the same over here. So you can see that's pulled in. I'd like to actually pull it into here as well. So while I've got my tangent constraint, I'll just click there there so you can see I've got three tangent constraints where those uh, circles are just meeting just just kissing beautifully there if you like all right now the next part that I want to do is actually actually trim this part of the circle away into my sketch tools again shortcut there is T and I'm just going to click on this portion and trim that away okay now the next thing that I want to do here Rather than doing that another uh, two times, which would you know, take a little bit longer, what I can do here is just use my circular pattern tool again. So let's go circular pattern, select the object, so there it is. We'll select the center point that we're gonna rotate this around. And did I click on that properly? Sorry, center point. There we go, and we've got three in there once again. That looks wonderful. Now, Everything that you can see there is uh, is black, which means that it's a fully defined sketch, and it should update if we change things. So, for example, if we find that this 35 here actually needs to be more like 30, you will see that the, the sketch updates also, which is exactly what we want. So I'm actually going to put that back at 35. Okay, so there it is. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump out of the sketch, so I'm going to click on Stop Sketch here, move that out of the way, and I'll click on the Home button up here, and now we're in 3D space. So we want to extrude this, so I'm going to go into uh, Create and Extrude, and we're basically going to select the profiles that we want to extrude. So basically that, 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 and the value that we're going to extrude is basically the height of the bearing itself, which is 7 millimeters. So we're just going to click on OK there. OK, looking good. All right, we want to soften this external edge, both on the top and bottom surface. So we'll do that using a fillet. So we'll go into uh, Modify here, and we'll grab the fillet tool. Again, shortcut is F. And we'll select this top edge. And then we'll put a value in of, uh, let's go 3 on the top. And I'll just lock that away. And then we'll do the same on the bottom, F for fillet, put a value of 3 in, okay, and have a look at that, that's basically our 3D part that's ready, almost ready, to be 3D printed. Alright, so in the next uh, little video we'll, we'll look at ways in which we can export this out as an STL file for 3D printing.